Alright, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here, of course, for our podcast. podcast. Number 21. Number 21, yeah. And this is going into what the original trilogy of, of Star, Star Wars, Wars did, did well. well. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we'll be going into that and going in detail as to yeah. what we found to be the true standout uh, things that they did, yeah. uh, particularly with uh, excellence. Right, because, I mean, with something as huge as Star Wars and as acclaimed as Star Wars, like it, sometimes it can be kind of easy to lose track of what were the specific things in particular that they did well. Yep, exactly. So we'll be going into that, and we'll also be addressing some of the nitpicks that people right. have. To show that Star even Wars. the original trilogy had things that were nitpickable. Exactly. Uh, before we do that, we got to give a shout out to our one of our VIP patrons. That's right, uh, Almighty Gavlin, Gavlin, otherwise known on the Discord as that one Gav. You're, You're awesome, awesome, dude. Yeah, very one awesome. of our very first uh, yep. VIP patrons. And yeah, give you yeah. another shout out, dude. Thank you so much for your support. We really appreciate it a lot, and it, it, means, it so means, much. means quite a lot. Yeah. All right, now let's so, get into this. I think the first thing to mention would be the fact that New exactly. Hope is straight up the hero's journey. Right. And not only that, the trilogy as a whole follows yep. a lot of the hero's journey. It does. It a New Hope mean. is kind of the microcosm of the whole hero's journey. Right. Like, take Joseph Campbell's Hero with a Thousand Faces and just like, okay, let's put some names and, you know, proper nouns on there. And this is one of the things where, you know, good artists... You know, good artist copy, copy great, great artist steal. steal. Exactly. So yep. in in this instance, George Lucas and the creative team behind Star Wars did something really, really re special. Really special here. Yeah. Because when you think about Joseph Campbell's work, you might think of, oh yeah, I've heard of that guy that did the hero's journey. But when right. you actually get into the nitty gritty of what makes up mm -hmm. this whole uh, this whole system of de kind of deconstructing a story. Right. It's, it, it gets at the fundamentals of almost all epic storytelling. Right. And, and one of the things that Star Wars did so great with this is that they didn't just, like, they didn't just steal it. Because right. a lot of times, um, like, if you were, like, oh, even if you haven't read Joseph Campbell, if you did read up on the hero's journey, you'd be like, oh, I recognize a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Because the whole, the whole idea of the old mentor that ends up tragically dying and stuff like that. People do that all the time, but it's done so much that a lot of times people miss out on why that's so impactful in the right. first place. Mm -hmm. And maybe yep. because Star Wars did it so early on, and maybe just because George Lucas knew what Joseph Campbell was getting at, mm -hmm. the points just, they they hit They home. hit really well. Also, I think the, the main reason is in the execution. Uh, yeah. Star Wars does a lot of things that nowadays would be considered tropey. Yes. But the thing is, is that the execution of Star Wars hasn't really been hit perfectly ever right. since yeah, because Star Wars. If you think about Star Wars, one of the things, like in A New Hope in particular, mm -hmm. that I think is one of the reasons why it was done so well is because they kept things simple. Mm -hmm. A lot of times in stories nowadays, they're so focused on like, okay, this has been done so many times before, we need yeah. to figure out some way to make it unique. And that's a good thing. Right. But one of the advantages that Star Wars had, because it was so much earlier, they didn't have to worry about that. We're just going to, they just did their guns, they stuck to their guns, they did it really well. And they didn't clutter it with a bunch of other stuff. Yes, but but to be fair, there were other things that did Hero's Journey similar type things, but none of them stuck to the archetypal roles so much so right. that you could say, oh, this was literally a copy paste. Exactly. We hadn't been burnt out on it by that point. Right. Yeah. Uh, but moving on, the next thing that they really did well mm -hmm. was using the sci-fi fantasy, fantasy genre. genre. Yeah. Because like, if you think about it, before Star Wars, mm -hmm. sci-fi fantasy wasn't really a thing. And if it was, it wasn't even really a, a good thing. Like, it right, was kind exactly. of a joke. Yeah, like... You either the, did one or the other. You yep. did not blend. Like, cl classic sci-fi, you know, stories from around that time that we know about today. It's like Star Trek, for instance, right? right? Mm -hmm. No, like, real fantasy in Star Trek at all. And that was one of the things that made Star Wars so easily accessible to mm -hmm. people... Because they could still get behind the whole idea of, you know, the hero's journey and the magic and the chosen one that has to save the day and all that stuff, right? Yeah. Um, while still having it have awesome space battles and laser swords and things like that. <laughs> right. In a in a setting that is very alien and, and very exactly. much out of this world. In right. fact, they used a lot of that, I would say, in the promo footage for Star Wars originally was the oh, idea yeah. that it was these very kind of 
human archetype characters set in a vast yep, sci-fi universe story. that was yep. very strange. Right. And that, of course, uh, leads in, let's let's do this one next. Um, oh, yeah. Because this leads into what really was a very risky move by George Lucas to start off A New Hope in particular yep. with was the droids. The droids. Because and the droids in Star Wars, like... You were were monumental. Mm-hmm. You might not re- like realize this because yeah. we're so accustomed to them nowadays. Yeah. But before there was a lot of stuff with like robots and things like that. But they were very much robots. Mm-hmm. They were robotic. They didn't have the kind of personality that people like C three PO and R two D two had yeah. back then. So the <laughs> not fact, at like, all. Like you you hear about the stories of people like realizing for the first time like holy crap these robot things actually have personality yep. r2d2 sounds scared right there right. c3po is actually like <laughs> a, a bit has... of a like stickler for the rules yeah uh, to, to put it nicely <laughs> yeah and and there were there were a lot of things that could be attributed to that one the the acting on parts of anthony yes. daniels for c3po mm-hmm. Uh, the way they had R2-D2's design work in such a way that he kind of is a moving little trash can, mm-hmm. but uh, the moments where he'd kind of turn and have his little words of... Yep. <laughs> yeah, like the fact that they were able to convey emotion mm-hmm. for this character... With zero through, dialogue. With, with zero actual dialogue, mm-hmm. just with beeps and boops and stuff like that and words and clicks, like, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's something that takes genius. Yep. It's something that we've seen more and more people try to imitate nowadays and we can all really remember like oh yeah yeah i see mm-hmm. that i see you yep. and your 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 r2d2 hack character exactly. there and and we can take that kind of stuff for granted nowadays only because star wars really blazed the trail for it back right then. but even now you go back and watch the original trilogy and r2d2 and c3 oh yeah man oh yeah they, they, they have banter. they stand out oh They're yeah fantastic oh yeah it's also a lot of the times where r2d2 in particular people respond to him as if they understand him and we have as the audience are left to wonder what it was rtd2 right. said even though yep. we can kind of get based on context what which he was is, saying which is great because right. that means that basically you can fill in with your imagination whatever exactly. you would have personally wanted r2d2 to say at that point yep it's pretty cool yeah it's pretty cool uh next thing i think is uh just a really important thing that uh it, it needs to be said even though there was only one really a particular female character like this but princess leia was or a leia, leia organa character. or leia skywalker just she's one of the character one of the best characters in yep. star wars but also one of the best female characters right. in a sci-fi slash fantasy sci-fi right. fantasy role we've yep. ever had and like, if you ever in the last 40 years yep and just if you look at fantastic. a lot of the female characters from around that time something to be desired i mean uh uhura from star trek was fantastic Fantastic, another example of an amazing female character done in that right but uh leia leia sits as the as 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 a queen as a princess all in her own slot because one of the things that uh star wars didn't do to leia was restrict her to a specific role right and yeah in The the three movies in particular we see her go through multiple kind of uh aspects of her character that gives further dimensionality we see her as royalty Mm -hmm. we see her as a captured prisoner and we see her as a soldier we see her as a soldier in fact we see her as a general yep we we (laughs) like and and here's one of the things that i want to point out we see her as an in disguise bounty hunter yeah yeah, that was great too yeah but when they introduce leia as a character right? right It's a lot of it is very mysterious at the beginning, you know. Yeah. Okay, there's a person that gives stuff to droids, things like that. Mm-hmm. But as soon as she is basically in in her situation of okay, she's in trouble now. She's she's right. a captive. She yeah. doesn't let that affect how she behaves. Right. Because when Darth Vader confronts her like, about Darth what she's Vader, doing, <laughs> he just literally like strangled this guy with this hand and chucked him against the wall. Nope, she's still just as sassy to Back him talks as, to Vader as like she it's is nothing. to anybody. When yep. she is alone, captured on a space station the size of a moon that can blow up planets. Granted, she doesn't know it at that point. Yeah, she totally dishes it out to Tarkin. Yeah, like and when when Luke and Han come to rescue her. Mm-hmm. She her first, back. Her first thing that she says is, after she's been tortured, by the way, is, aren't you a little short for a stormtrooper? And then as soon as they are like, no, we're actually rescuing you, she's like, oh, 
well, you're doing this kind of badly. Let me help you out here. <laughs> like, that's awesome. It's it's one of the things that was a, a real refreshing thing, even even like more recently, like nowadays, seeing yeah. her character as a very uh, refreshing, uh, just experience for people that are not necessarily just wanting a female character just so they can be that strong female character icon, but having right. complexity and having yep. motivations and desires that go beyond just the male counterparts around them, right. but also having like real spunk and tenacity mm -hmm. and authority yep. and yep. gravitas. She has a greater sense of impetus Charisma. than like both Han and Luke. In like some ways, yeah. In a lot I think, of ways. I think Han sits in a special category well, of his right, own. Yeah. But we'll yeah. get we'll to get that to eventually. That. Yeah. 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 So next thing we got to bring up is we've talked a lot about A New Hope. But we have to give special right. credit to Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes, Strikes Back. Back is like amazing. Uh, Empire Strikes Back is probably one of the greatest sequels in the history of cinema. Yep. And when we deeply. say this, this is not something that is a niche opinion. Right. This is like, almost stated as empirical yeah, like, fact. If you want by to have an Hollywood. Awesome, yep. If you want to have an awesome sequel, yep. try and do Empire Strikes Back. Yep. And not to say that you need to like copy it exactly. But it's but almost a joke at, nowadays. It's exactly. Like, right. Terminator Two is the Empire Strikes Back of sequels right. for yeah. you know it, exactly. robot the fact killer that, movies the fact or whatever. That people will use Empire Strikes Back as like a noun, not a proper noun, but just like a <laughs> Oh yeah, it was The Empire Strikes Back. Like it's taken on its own meaning. Right. That's impressive and it did not get there without good reason. Very good reason. It did and we so and we, many things and well. we we want to we want to focus on this in particular because we are going to be releasing uh soon our uh The Last Jedi movie. Right. What it did well, like specifically. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh this is a character focused film. Yep. The Empire Strikes Back. How often do they do that in Star Wars? Like, movies in general is rare enough, yeah. but in Star Wars, they don't usually do that. They because, don't. Because they have this amazing world. They have the Force and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. yep. But the fact that The Empire Strikes Back was, like, completely revolving around the characters. Most yep. of the time, the Rebellion wasn't even there. Yep. It's just following a couple of characters as they're doing their thing. And in then different locations. In different locations. Yep. That's there you the go. movie. That's there the you movie. Go. And what they did with that was bring one into place yoda fantastic Gear. we'll get to that eventually but it evolved the universe in a way that we weren't expecting from a new hope yep but we are so glad that it chose to do right because once it did that this thing the force and the philosophy of the universe the the stakes for these characters in particular the arcs that were kind of started and tantalized a yep. little bit in new hope but didn't really go didn't anywhere. really go anywhere maybe a little bit for luke if anything but and maybe 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 for some of the characters but they were they were very small in right. empire strikes back they pull it wide exactly. open yep. and start and going really in depth into why these characters the, do what they do and here's one of the things that i think is awesome about empire strikes back that goes to show that you re there's really no excuse to not have something be character focused really because so true because in star wars one of the things that they do best other than you know the action and all that stuff is the world building yeah and it might be easy to think like well if they're focusing so much on the characters and their, intera their interactions they might not do as awesomely on the world building it's a but, fair point but empire strikes back probably had the best world building out of yep. any of the original <laughs> trilogy movies because you yep. got this personal feel to each of the worlds they went to in a new yep. hope you have that starting out with tatooine right, right. and and the the ship when you know c-3po and r2d2 are, are escaping from the stormtroopers and right. stuff but then as soon as it's like okay we're in the millennium falcon and we're there's the death star and yavin and things like that you don't get that personal in-depth touch to things because yep. it's grandiose in scale now. Yep. Because they kept it really small and intimate and personal with the cast yep. in Empire Strikes Back, they were able to go to more places yep. and have better immersion in the worlds themselves. Yep. And that is awesome. Yeah, we, we can't overstate like at all how fantastic the empire strikes back was it evolved the villains it evolved the heroes yep. it evolved the universe it evolved the stakes it evolved kind of the happily it, it evolved kind of the what happens after happily ever after because right the star wars a new hope is kind of a fairy tale if you yep. think about it yep Save the princess, woohoo, and destroy the evil and, bad guy and, ship thing. And, and, and as far as they that, know, it could have been over at that point. Right. Darth Vader didn't need to die. He could have been dead. It's 
ship went out to wherever, yeah. you don't really have this sense that the Empire is necessarily anywhere beyond the Death Star. Yeah. Once that's done, it's done. The Empire's gone. Maybe, maybe they have some ships somewhere. But yeah, maybe they have like, oh, we won. Somewhere, but yeah, yeah, especially no... because that ending scene in A New Hope is kind of ambiguous, you know? Right. It's just like, you get medals. It's like, does that mean the galaxy is saved? Or like, hey, we struck a blow and now we're actually yeah. in a fight. Like, right. that we might be able to win. The Empire Strikes Back puts that exa- it puts it exactly where they want you to be in that once once the you know rebels are kind of you're kind of being brought back to the characters on Hoth mm-hmm. and everything like that and you see that the empire is oh they are not they're not going they're without not a fight around. Oh, they're yeah. not messing around they the come down just there begun. this is not even a thing where the rebels have tipped the scales in their favor yet nope nope it is still a rebellion they just made them angry <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and you start to realize one that the universe got a little bit darker but it wasn't yeah. really because of the reasons why nowadays shows get dark. Right. When nowadays a show or a movie or a story gets dark, it's because they killed off a character in a very edgy way. Right. Like Obi-Wan, who was killed off earlier, the mentor. Yeah. Who do they kill in Empire Strikes Back? No one. No if one. If anything, but, but the, what they do in this mm-hmm. is they make it so that the good guys lose. Lose. And they lose badly. They lose badly. They lose multiple on multiple times. fronts. Mm-hmm. It's not just that the Hoth base gets destroyed. It's not just that Han gets like frozen, frozen and, in kid- and kidnapped, taken away. And, and it's not just where. Luke losing his hand. And it's or not just like that. Luke losing his hand. All of that stuff is happening. Yep. And at the end, it's just, well, hey, you managed to meet back up with the Rebellion. Yep. And you there managed you to get everyone back together. Yeah. At least except Han. <laughs> right. You saved most everybody. Yeah. And that, that feeling. Good job. That you know. feeling of having these characters go through these intense conflicts and just barely make out of it, That's, but most of them by the skin of their teeth, it makes you feel really invested yep. in them having a a final conclusion to their story that's exactly. worthwhile. Because so, we love to see struggle. Yes. That is something that is very important. And in the Star Wars universe, that's mm-hmm. something that is usually very much lacking. Yes. Because in, say, A New Hope, it is the hero's journey. It's a fairy tale. Right. They go on their adventure, they be- beat the bad guys, woohoo, it's great. Yep. So then in this one, when they have everything go wrong that basically could go wrong, yep. <laughs> you're like, it's all right, good. all right, this is a real conflict now. Yeah, and we have to we have to talk about the next like the next thing here really quick. This is a oh, very yeah. particular thing that shook the cosmos with regards to the mother of all plot twists. Yeah. Spoiler alert, but you probably already know it by now. <laughs> it's a joke now. Yeah. Is the no I, I am, am your, your father. father. See, by the way, it's not Luke. I am your father. It's right. no I am your father. But yeah, yeah. details. But the idea that it's like like we laugh at it now, right? Because right. it's like oh I am your father. It's you know memed and joked about you know everywhere. Right. But imagine. You yeah. haven't seen Star Wars before. Yeah. There's Darth Vader, who is this amazingly intimidating bad guy. Yeah. Right? Just this force of destruction. Who no killed one the main stop. character's father. Who killed the main character's father. You can shoot him, and he blocks the bolts with his hands. With his fingers, he kills his own subordinates yep. from halfway across the galaxy. <laughs> Nothing can stop this guy. Yeah. And then you find out, oh, he's actually your dad. And he wants you to join him. Yep. Oh my gosh! What? It like, was it, it, like if we had our if we had our channel back in the day, this would be one of the things that would have gone like super viral. You oh know, yeah, this you, this would have been those ones where it's like everyone's like. Can you imagine like the original trilogy of Star Wars in the day of social media? Like if it <laughs> didn't leak out what actually happened. Yeah. Which is funny because they actually gave out false leaks even at yep, that time. Yep. They 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 had the script done like they had the script done differently. Right for and, everyone else, and, and the Luke only people that the, knew was Mark Hamill and Irvin Kershing and uh, George Lucas. Right, and they and they they told him they're like, by the way, if you tell anyone, we'll know it's you because you're the only one who knows. <laughs> so like right. Leia didn't even know. They thought it was no Obi Wan killed your father. Exactly, and yet it was actually <laughs> no I am your yeah. father. So just. Yeah. insane plot twist that evolved the stories brought Luke even though Mark Hamill wasn't the best actor of the main three mm-hmm. even then in that emotion you really felt this oh, yeah. because you were at this point already really invested in Luke's yep. story so it just, oh. it's just done very well and that was one of the other things that they did really well in A New Hope like Luke mm-hmm. very much had a reason for doing what he was doing and it was the hero's journey and all that stuff and it right. was great in this one though 
because of the conflict and the struggle, right. they made it so that it's like, no, more things are being taken from you. It's not just that your family was, was killed right, right. by stormtroopers and now you have to go on your hero's journey. But it's like, no, uh, Han and Leia are in danger. Han is gone. Leia, you know, who knows? Who knows, yeah. right? The, yeah, it really it was, ups the stakes. It was fantastic. And that moves into our next bit perfectly in Darth Vader as just... The, the villain. The, the villain. Like, the, the, the dragon. The... He, he is one of the quintessential black caped, well, imposing, yeah. imperial, terrifying, well, but complex mm -hmm. villains we've seen in cinema and, and ever. And here's something that I want to point out, okay? The look of Darth Vader is intimidating now. Yes. But before that, yeah. <laughs> imagine how ridiculous that must have seemed, right? Right. You're like, trying to present this idea for this, this, this villain. Dude with a with the cone helmet and a cape. Yep. That, that oh, talks with a weird voice like this. Yeah, yeah. On, like, on, on. like okay. His voice did get better over time. Go back well, and watch the originals. It... <laughs> yeah. Well, and 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 I mean the the voice was like James Earl Jones did a great oh, he job. Oh, did a great job. Um, yes. And it's actually, it's interesting if you look up, like, they had a bunch of different people that played Darth Vader over the original trilogy. But, um, <laughs> but... The, the body. Right, right, the body. It was yeah. always James Earl Jones. Right, right. But the fact that they were able to make us take him so seriously with all the things that he did, and now, now the whole thing of killing your subordinates is just a joke, right? It's yeah. like, oh yeah, everyone does it, because why not? They have a, they, almost like Kylo Ren, they have a I want to be like Darth Vader poster, you mm -hmm. know, above their bed. So... He, he's one of the best lawful evil yes. villains we've yes. also ever seen we don't in terms get of those. Uh, fiction. A lot of the times in stories, especially when you're talking about like fantasy or something, you know, mm -hmm. anytime someone has like dark powers of destruction and evil, they're super impersonal. They're they're super impersonal. Or they're crazy. And they're or they're just crazy. They yeah. they are trying so hard to be while well, at the same time the cunning plan for everything and at the same time being the chaotic evil i want to kill things because i am evil and bad and stuff mm -hmm. like that whereas darth vader he talks about order yeah how often do you get bad guys talking about that yeah like and also he seems to have these these moments where he's just kind of tired about the inefficiency and the inadequacy yep, of those yep. around him mm -hmm. and it's kind of chilling because you see him around all these British sounding gentlemen. Yeah, and in they, uniforms. In and uniforms, stuff like and that. they seem very proper yeah. people. They don't the seem evil. The stormtroopers can't hit anything, you right? Know, so they're not really effective, but, but they but look you, intimidating. But you see all these people with human faces. They're not in masks like nope. the stormtroopers or something, and they're genuinely scared of this seven foot tall mm -hmm. behemoth walking yep. around. Oh, yeah. Here's, here's one of the other things. And this is like a very specific thing, right? Yeah. This is not by any means like why Star Wars is so good or anything. Right. But that line that he gives to the moths when they're talking about the Death Star. Oh. <laughs> and he says, the ability to destroy a planet is insignificant compared to the power of the Force. Yeah. Okay. So if you're trying to establish that there's some mystical energy that is really awesome since, like, especially nowadays, since it's done so much mm -hmm. and you're actually wanting it to seem wondrous and like, wait, how is that even possible? Right. Using a line like this doesn't hurt. It's yeah. bold. And if you can't follow it up, it's like, well, that's unfortunate. Right. But they do in this because he says that someone's like, what? What are you talking about? There's no. And then. And you just start strangling just start the guy strangling. telekinetically. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I find your lack of faith hey, disturbing. disturbing. <laughs> like, uh, and, and also just the fact that they, they added those sort of like, uh, religious sort of like flavors in, right. into there with the force as he's this dark entity that just will kill anyone that right. he wants. Otherwise you would just look at him and say he's some kind of brute enforcer guy. Exactly. But then he starts talking philosophically uh -huh. and a little yep. bit of this spiritualistic yep. kind of mm -hmm. mysticism yep. and you're like wait what? Like what? You don't get that in villains nowadays right the idea that like because even though like okay if you go into the eu stuff you know how the dark siders view the force and yeah, wanting to manipulate yeah, yeah, yeah. it and stuff rather than being subservient to it okay that's fine but there's still the idea that darth vader is acknowledging this thing as some greater power than himself that yeah. he wields and that is why he is so awesome right and it's beyond your comprehension you wouldn't understand it <laughs> <laughs> and and to be fair darth vader gets better the more you watch Star Wars. Yes. This is yes. one of the things that I, I feel like 
uh, gets it happens a lot in fantasy and sci-fi. They introduce the villain in the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. And within two episodes or a movie or a few chapters, that beginning antagonist villain is overshadowed by an even better antagonist villain. Sure. They invested so much into making Vader the antagonist yep. that you yep. almost forget everyone else that was yeah. an antagonist. Exactly. Tarkin? Uh, eh. yeah. The Emperor? Eh. I mean, he yeah, only he really had, he comes had that, in He had that one end. scene at the end. Yeah, that's, that's good. It's good. What? But... Jabba the Hutt? Yeah, he, he was cool in the end. Yeah. Uh, but... Boba Fett? Who's that? Like, yeah. the, like, it's really just Vader. Yep. And that's so ballsy because that is you're so ballsy. putting... You're and putting all of your antagonistic force mm-hmm. to be uh, basically represented by this guy. Right. But other than that, you're basically just hoping cool. that the presence he carries backed up by the guys exactly. in white behind him yep. or the massive ships or the mm-hmm. Death Star yep. itself being that. And it's a very uh, it's it's a very risky move, but Darth Vader's just gravitas. When he moves, people move oh, yeah. around him. Mm-hmm. There's this like there's this yeah, yeah. There's this. They they, thing they do that things that to build up him. Darth yeah. Vader to make him seem intimidating and scary. In rather than doing a lot of things that stories will do nowadays, where they try and build up like the shock value, right. where the the bad guy does something that's so appalling, you're like, oh my gosh, this is a despicable person, like Joffrey right. or Joffrey 2.0, aka Ramsay Bolton, you know, mm-hmm. things like that. Whereas opposed with Darth Vader, oh, he does terrible things, but the most terrible things that he does, he does to his own men, right. Mm-hmm. He's not doing to the heroes. He cuts off Luke's hand. That sucks. He tortures Leia. Yes, he's he's a bad guy, yeah. right? But but it's more about the potential of what he can do. Exactly. And they communicate it in such a way to where you're kind of just a little bit on the edge of your seat whenever he shows up. Yep. And he doesn't necessarily move quickly oh. or in a way that has shock associated with it. He's just this yep. looming and, presence of darkness. And one of there. the other things that they do that's very clever, that's mm-hmm. very clever is they make it so that Darth Vader never actually really fails. Mm-hmm. It's actually the people around him yes. that serve him that fail, right. and they are punished accordingly. Right. But by doing that, they're able to maintain this presence, this mm-hmm. force that Darth Vader has, right. where it's like when he shows up, it is over. Yes. Run. It's something that, interestingly enough, there's some parts in the Star Wars Rebels show that exemplify that aspect so much so that they are trying to almost outdo some bits of Vader in the right. original trilogy. Yeah. But I feel like that's one of the points that is true of Vader is when he shows up on scene, Bad the party stops, yeah. everything's over, Vader's here. Yeah. And I feel like this, particularly him as a villain, you can't you know, talk about him as a villain without talking about the arc of Anakin Skywalker. And it's not just the what's done in the original trilogy, but it's also what this ending is and the idea that there is a man behind the mask. This is not a robot. This is not a C-3PO that's just done really well. This is a person, especially when Mm -hmm. we get into the twist of I'm your father, you go, wait a minute, that means you're a Skywalker Mm -hmm. and that means you were like Luke at some point, Yep, maybe, but then something went wrong. What's that story? Mm -hmm. And there's this mystery box element where there's this mask machine thing you see in front of you but you know there's something in there underneath yep. and then the whole final movie is about i know there's good in you right and you're like well that would make sense there's probably something mm-hmm. in there right yeah. and darth hopefully. vader is in complete denial about it but yep. you can almost hear in the denial the uh-huh. yep wait it's, no there is something there like the line yeah. where he says it is too, too late for me son yeah like that's, it's that's like oh that's one of those things that i gosh. absolutely love because they they gave contradiction and conflict yep. to a character that was above that yeah. right <laughs> contrast he's just this he is dark he is a he is a pillar he is he is a almost a paragon of darkness yes right yeah <laughs> and they gave him conflict they gave him contradictions but they didn't. That didn't steal away from his coolness. Like it didn't. I don't it didn't know steal how away from they the did it exactly. 
But even when Luke's talking to him and saying there's good in you and all that stuff, I sense the conflict in you and, you know, come back to the good side and all that. You're more thinking like, hey, Luke, I don't... Yeah, I don't, and you're like, you're, you're like... You're, you're really risking thinking, a lot here. Yeah, Luke, you're <laughs> risking a lot. Like, are you, you're a are you little sure about that? <laughs> crazy. Like, do you really want to be doing this? This is Darth Vader we're talking about. Right. <sighs> I just... <laughs> Because because so often like like having having a conflicted character, mm -hmm. um, a lot of times it doesn't doesn't go over well with the audience, no. even if it's actually very good as far as like character development goes. Mm -hmm. See Kylo Ren. Yeah. Um, so the fact that they were able to make that work with Darth Vader is really impressive. Right. It, it's the it's the difference I would say between someone like Kylo Ren and Darth Vader. Right. The idea that even in Darth Vader's like con like being con conflicted and stuff. He still has this sense of like conviction and mm -hmm. like, well, there's a force. Off. There's yeah, a force there's behind. A, there's it. a force there. Yep, wow. and it it just works with uh, yep. also within the mysticism of the force and Star Wars. Exactly. So it, it's fantastic. Yep. And moving into great transitions, but we're now going to talk about Yoda and the Force itself. Right. It, in Star Wars, I would say they did characters that were likable. But yes. we only gave slots to specific characters because these characters really carried the Star Wars universe to be more than just a movie. Right. Yoda and his stuff about the Force in particular in The Empire Strikes Back changed the way philosophy was introduced into movies just forever. Well, yeah. And and, and if I, you think about it, like as far as like characters and how much time they had in the, the movies, yeah. right? Like... Like uh, Sir Alec Guinness, right? As yeah. as Ben Kenobi, he did a fantastic job. Yoda, did, he was amazing. And yes. and if you look at how much time he's actually in the story, it is it's such a small, small amount. It is very such a small, small amount. But those moments we remember. We like, remember all of them. Like the the They're number so of quotable. like qu yeah quotable lines that mm -hmm. Yoda has compared to how many lines he has some total yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah. Like. Like, we, we don't think about it too much because, yeah, he's Yoda and Star Wars and all that stuff. But, like, you actually count him up, it's kind of insane. Yeah. There's 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 things in there where Star Wars began to transcend just the escapist storytelling medium. Uh, when Yoda starts talking about uh, how Luke sees a problem in front of him, he says, that's too big. He's like, no. This this is totally different. No, different. Like, no, no different. Only, Only different, different in your, in your mind. mind. You, you must, must learn. learn what you have learned. Yep. Or it's, I don't believe it. That is that is why you fail. fail. Yeah, yeah. Like there there are, there are so many great lines in there that what what, what will I find in there? Only what you, you take, take with, with you. you. Yep. Like, <laughs> it's like, like <laughs> oh my gosh, we get into a lot of. I would say there's a lot of Eastern philosophies in there that are, are really good. But one of the things that Star Wars did well is it took from specific philosophies from different areas and blended them together to where it was sure. accessible. And here's one of the things that oh, I think is yeah. fantastic here, is there are a lot of young kids that watched Star Wars, mm -hmm. and they have the slightest clue how to process philosophy on the deep mm -hmm. levels and stuff. Right. But what it did was it got them thinking to the idea of, oh yeah, those lines of Yoda, kind of, what was, was he saying? Really good. And then when they think back on it, you know, five years later, they're like, oh my God. God, do or do not. Do there or do not. No there is no try. try. Like there's those things where we can kind of laugh at them as a joke, and it but, might be philosophy for children, but that no, doesn't make it any. That less doesn't good. make it any less good. Thank like, you, Jacob. Oh. Yes. Oh yeah. my gosh. Also, when we had the force in the beginning. It's an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us. It penetrates us. It binds the galaxy together. That was that was it. That was what the mm -hmm. force was. Yep. We had no idea and that it was trust the force. Yeah. Exactly. It was basically use the force. We didn't right. know what it is. It was oh, more yeah, of like yeah. a use the force. That's right. it was more of like a feelings energy thing that right. Luke could interact but with. This is where they took it to the next level. They took it to the next level. Yep. While, and, keep, while still keeping it true to their foundations. Right. Because there was this yin yang feel of this pull between your negative emotions versus your positive mm -hmm. emotions and your will to choose yep. versus being swayed by the forces around you. Mm -hmm. they, Once you start down the dark path, forever, forever will it dominate, dominate your destiny. destiny. Yeah. As it did Obi-Wan's apprentice. Yeah. yeah. This this movie, The Empire Strikes Back, but specifically the parts of The Empire Strikes Back that deal with Yoda and the Force should be, um, I, I would say, like, should be almost mandatory watching for anyone before they reach the age of 15. Because <laughs> yeah, like, it's, it's, it's huge. It's so important yep. in, as far it's, as 
mm-hmm. n- not only just the the elements to the story that's involved, the themes in general transcend that right. and become something truly special. Like, like you said, everyone should watch this before like fifteen. Mm-hmm. These are the kinds of things that make it so that when like people hear, like say me and Caleb, we hear like, mm-hmm. oh, I've never seen Star Wars. We're like, what? Right. You, you need to do that. Like, right. At the that? very least, like watch, you know, the, the first three. You right. Know? Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. This is really important. Now, so, um, one of the other things that we have to point out is um, yeah. Han Solo. Yeah. I, this doesn't really transition well. but No, it doesn't. But like, as well, I mean, as far as characters go. As far as characters as, go, this is because, the last character we're going to bring up right. as far as for the original trilogy. Sorry, sorry, Luke. You were great, but you were kind of a means to tell a story. Yeah. Like... <laughs> But Han Solo, Han Solo, Han Solo was the one that didn't need to be there. He did not need to be in the story. But the story absolutely would not have been the same without yeah. him. Yeah, like that's that's why he's such a fan favorite. He he does the whole anti-hero thing very well. Even mm-hmm. if there is that whole you know thing of like, wait, which one shot first? Neither. Han was the only one that shot. <laughs> but um, you know those those little bits. He got his arc in A New Hope, and they they, and they continued it, it. They keep it going in some yeah. really cool ways across the other two movies. Right, he's the character that's constantly walking along the lines of being selfish versus being selfless. Yep, he's trying to decide whether or not he wants to be a hero in this galaxy full of heroes and villains. Exactly, he's he's the he's the he's every, the every man, man basically amidst beings like Darth Vader, where it's like Darth Vader's there. I'm gonna shoot him. Oh crap that didn't work he's a god mage and i'm just a regular guy i'm just a dude i'm just a bro here yeah what am i gonna do i I think han uh carries something that's also uniquely harrison ford in that the charisma that harrison ford has when he's acting in a role that he's enjoying very very special is very special Yeah. yeah harrison ford really killed it in executing a lot of the dialogue which i would actually say is pretty weak with regards to star wars in yeah. general the yeah. interactions between characters are carried a lot of times by very specific dialogue moments right. that kind of overshadow the weaker awesome moments. Right. dialogue moments yeah so han yep. solo goes through his arc in a new hope mm-hmm. and it's self-contained and it works and it's fantastic mm-hmm. and the empire strikes back they evolve it they give him a little bit more feeling they gave him a little bit more they- uh, kind they, of, I would say a little bit more, you know, kind of weakness, a little bit of flaws right. here. They and there. they make it so that because if you notice, it's like, oh, his arc's resolved at the end of the New Hope. Got yeah. his money, good. Yeah. There you go, right? But then, then, for some reason, he sticks around. Then, then you he know? sticks around, and and he does it just to help people. And yep. and there, the all the stuff that happens with him getting taken by Boba and Jabba's palace and stuff like that, all that could have happened if you just said, you know what, Hoth, I. I can't deal with this right now. Okay, someone else will find Luke, you know, out yep. in the out in the snow. Yep. Okay, someone else will get you guys out of here. Yep. You know, whatever. I'll drop you off somewhere, and then I got to go pay Jabba. You know, right. he, he could have done any of those things, but he didn't. Yep. He keeps making those, deci- those decisions over and over and over again for reasons like he's starting to have some attraction towards Leia. There's some chemistry there. He's starting to really get kind of a kick out of sticking it to the empire yeah he's really starting to enjoy kind of the high stakes adventure of the whole thing it's that like yeah. that whole idea of the scoundrel with the heart of gold yes like, han, han solo, solo han solo ten out popularized ten it like yeah. like oh my gosh he did he he is the scoundrel with the heart of right. gold. right yep and, and, and it just works so well yep. and then finally when you have him coming back into the story after the whole frozen and carbonite bit yep there's this feel of just oh it hasn't been the same without you it really has i've missed you so much and also when you finally have the ending uh kind of bit with han solo having come to come to realize that this is his family you know Mm -hmm. and i would say having chewbacca around to kind of voice his kind of frustrations a bit here and there really helped him so han solo goes with chewbacca but Han Solo's character, in combination with his story arc Mm -hmm. and Harrison Ford's acting, just really killed it. And then also, I I think we should talk about this one next. He leads really neatly into the next bit in that Star Wars is funny. It is. Star Wars is really funny. And Han Solo, like, champions that. (laughs) He really does. Without it being something where it makes you take him less seriously. Yes. A lot of the times in the movies that have been coming out nowadays... The humor is not the problem because right. a lot of the humor in there is good. Mm-hmm. But then occasionally there will be those ones that aren't as good. 
and it it can be a little immersion breaking and, and make make what's happening feel less oh no people are gonna die the first order is gonna do you know whatever things like that mm-hmm. but all the stuff that Han does like can you think of some humor that Han does that was jarring oh that was jarring like I no. I can't no not really like it, even the things where it, it's kind of morbid humor where sure. it's like sorry for the mess and he flips a coin yeah yeah the cantina guy it's like <laughs> right. <"Ooh."> yeah <laughs> kind of, it's, exactly it's not jarring it's more of a thing where it shows who he is yeah and even the parts where i would say the humor could get a little bit like childish like with the ewoks in particular it's not centered around the characters it's centered around this this weird world that we're in it's centered right. around this weird setting that we're in yep. it's never around these characters like even the part where right. Han is trying to blow out the fire with the Ewoks are about to burn him and stuff. Yeah. I I don't feel like it's pulling out of the story yeah. in any or, way. Or, or the, the part where he chases the stormtroopers down the hall of the Death Star just yeah, screaming. screaming like a madman. Ah! Like, yeah. And then he comes around the corner and there's like a hundred of them. He's just, ah! Well, Fires actually, and runs back in the, the other way. In the original one, um, I think it was just that they came to a dead end, and there were like four stormtroopers or something. Yes, and he ends and up shooting special one of them. edition. They expanded and they showed expanded a, it, like yeah. a, a regiment of them. Right. Because <laughs> why not? Yeah, um, it works. Yeah, uh, and then of course there, there are uh, a couple other things that kind of kind of go hand in hand. But well, we would still go about the funny bits. We're not oh, just specifically okay. talking with Han Solo. Sure. I, I just yeah. wanted to say that. Uh, C-3PO and R2-D2 in particular are extremely yes, funny in yes. multiple parts. Um, I really uh, liked how Yoda was funny in his persona yep. that he put up to kind of mm-hmm. make people not take him seriously. Right. But I also liked how the humor had these morbid moments where it, it, in some ways there would be parts where, like what Han Solo was doing, where mm-hmm. he would shoot someone before yep. they could even do anything mm-hmm. to interfere with him and you could be like ha he got him and it's like oh he just killed a person i mean know, granted the person right here in public pointed at him but he just yes. did that in public and just pays the bartender for the mess right that's the only issue they would have with it right and then leaves and the scenario is 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 funny it's genuinely funny but then there's also that bit where it's like oh yeah this guy isn't morally good like completely no. like no he's just no problem killing this guy yeah uh, also there's parts where it gets a bit comical but then there's also the bit where you're like wait a minute he's mind controlling this guy when when ben kenobi jedi oh, mind yeah. tricks the stormtroopers like you don't need to see my identification yeah we don't need to see your identification it's on the droids you're looking for yeah yeah and that is hilarious now but i remember thinking back on that after like my second or third watch and being like wait a minute <laughs> Isn't that kind of a dark side thing? Like, like, like that would tampering like with it. someone's free will. Like, that seems a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and Obi Wan's like, ah, oh, the Force has strong influence over the weak minded. I'm like, yeah. that could not be abused at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Just kind of the thought of, oh, it's really funny. But then there's also also this depth to the humor. And, and then there's the really funny parts where it feels like they just had Harrison Ford, for instance, just go crazy, like. Uh, we just had a slight uh, weapons malfunction, yeah, yeah. Uh, but we're uh, fine. Yeah. We're all fine here, yeah, sir. Here, Thank sir, you. Uh, how are how you? Are you? Yeah. Uh, negative, negative. A large reactor leak. We're experiencing uh, major... Uh, uh, I, <laughs> who I, is this? What's your operating number? I uh, love that <laughs> so much. Like Those little moments where you basically yeah. see someone like starting to panic. Yeah. You know? That's one of the reasons why we love struggle so much in stories is because it, it shows who this person really is. Right. It shows and their humanity. It shows their humanity. And the fact yeah. that they did that in a comical way right that's just that's great it's fantastic yeah Ugh. all right so this one uh kind of kind of is a massive general encompassing one but star yeah. wars star wars is always going to get this one as a yeah. bonus whenever it comes out because it's the world building and well, setting it, it like, does there's a reason it, that the extended universe for star wars is so huge yes because there's so much meat in there yep. and there's so many things that are teased at exactly that aren't fully expounded on which then allows other people to basically say hey here's a blank space you can fill in right all the people that want to learn as much as they possibly can about star wars that's fantastic because there are eight thousand blank spaces that were just filled in over the last six months after this movie came out yeah and and even within the movies themselves the aliens yep the vehicles Mm -hmm. the ships oh yeah planets i mean 
the, those references to like, oh no, we'll be sent to the Kessel Mines for sure, or right. the Clone Wars, you know, and things yeah. like that. It wasn't always like where you knew what the Clone Wars was. Right. And, and these kinds of things ask questions of the audience. Mm-hmm. But what it does is it provides this kind of, I like to call it kind of the proper noun context. Oh, That's yeah. basically where you hear a bunch of proper nouns being dropped in exposition, mm-hmm. but they actually build context for the story. If they don't build context, then it's just throwing in fluff yep. for the sake of fluff. And here's, here's one of the other things. How often does Star Wars actually go into exposition? It's very rare. They do a very good job of making sure to communicate things either visually, right, or in an interactive way through through an interactive way through the characters, the dialogue. So it's still exposition, but it's it's masked. It's it's masked so well that it's it's not jarring. Like the the best example I could probably think of is exposition. (laughs) Well, well, okay, yes, the title crawl in all the movies. That's that's actually the the most expositiony part in all of Star Wars. Right, and they just they just get that out of the way and it's done. But then it's like. If you wanted to really pin something down, it's like when Tarkin talks about the Galactic Senate has finally been dissolved and uh, whatever remnants of the old Republic are now gone. You know, yes. the remaining territories will be governed by their regional, you know, whatever. Uh, truly, Fear. are is a bit more. <laughs> yeah. Fear will keep the local systems in line. Fear yeah. this battle station. Exactly. Yes, stuff like that. But like that happens so rarely. Yes, and when it's done, it's done in such a way that they pop, 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 spit it out. And they move on. Yep. And mm-hmm. and one of the things that I, I really want to say, Star Wars did visuals very well for its time. But one of the things, mm-hmm. I'm talking about graphics and using models and clever camera work mm-hmm. and things like that to make this world feel massive. But one of the things that they did very well, very well, was made everything feel just a bit slightly off in that you could tell, oh, this is a kitchen. Oh wait, this is kind of a, an opening hall area for a ship. Uh, this is a trash, you know, area. But there was always that bit of this lived-in, kind of messy, sci-fi-esque world with people sure. walking around in it. Yeah. And they would make remarks about things like, "Oh, I used to bullseye womp rat to my oh, T16 yeah, yeah. back home." And it's like. I'm guessing that's some kind of fast-moving, small Probably craft. Probably the speeder that he had at the beginning. Yeah, I, I yeah, guess, something, you know? something not exactly like that, but something similar. Right. And you don't necessarily like know that for a fact, nope. but because of the way they contextualize all these little bits mm-hmm. of world building, you're actually getting info that's you know right. really good, mm-hmm. and it ends up being tied in perfectly to the story yep. over and over and over again. There are plenty of times oh, yeah. where it doesn't get tied in as well, but <laughs> but the times where it is tied in, it's... especially when it comes into things like the Force, or oh, yeah. in things like the uh, the planets, or kind of the things moving within the conflict between the Rebels and the Galactic Empire. It's just done really It's well. just done fantastically well. One other thing that I want to bring special attention to in the original trilogy specifically, because they didn't do this as much in the other movies, mm-hmm. um, is this idea of the seedier underworld parts. Ooh, they yeah. kind of touched on that in each of the three movies in the original trilogy with mm-hmm. the Mos Eisley Cantina. Yep. And iconic, right? Yeah. But then also the bounty hunters in Empire Strikes Back. You can kind of gloss over that, but it's like Darth Vader hired a bunch of you know, uh, hitmen well, basically. Hitmen basically, like space hitmen, and the the imperial officers were very much not okay with having yeah. this, this rebel on board. Scum. This, this scum, yes. Um, and then, and then Jabba's of palace. course, Jabba's palace. Yep. And and with with these kinds of epic stories that Star Wars tells, I mean, we love the epic stories. Right. But the fact that they have these small focus, like like very like up close and personal views on different areas of the galaxy where it's mm-hmm. not because because at in those points it's not just focused on things that are familiar like like characters interacting and stuff like right. that but it's them being in an environment that it is strange right, right. and mm-hmm. a lot of times a lot of times uh stories don't tend to that i've seen go into that kind of underground area mm-hmm. and i really like it when they do that because mm-hmm. it's going beyond just the sort of the surface visuals that you can get right. from seeing the setting and things like that. It's like, no, let's 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 go into what you know, what are the people like that do things, you know, behind closed doors and, and stuff like that. Right. So the fact that we got that and they made it so fresh and different every single time mm-hmm. 
is really special because yeah. if you think about how much story they had to go through in like A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back yeah. and Return of the Jedi, I could have seen the writers basically saying, "We don't really have time to do that, so we're 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 just gonna we're just gonna cut the Jabba's palace arc, right? You know, and I that know. would have sucked. That would have sucked, yeah." All right, final bit for what Star Wars original, original trilogy did well has to be the space battles. Yeah, like, you can't mention Star Wars and not mention space battles. Yeah. Like, uh, you just can't. We could go into things like other types of battles, like the like the blaster battles or the Hoth battles, or just the kind of the battles in general. But the space battles were something... There was something really special, because they they had different types. They had, they, were, they had the one where they had the assault on the bad guy's base with the Death Star yes. in the first movie. And they had the chases mm -hmm. with the Millennium Falcon yep. from TIE Fighters and a lot of Star Destroyers. Yep. You Going had through asteroid fields mm -hmm. and crazy stuff like that. Yep. Like, you had parts where uh, it would be not necessarily an actual like space battle, but you would have like ships that would be, you know, doing like I don't I don't know if I can really explain what I'm what I'm exactly trying to explain, but like the uh, swoop bikes and I'm talking like, like I'm Jedi talking or... like Tantiv Four versus oh, like yeah. trying to escape okay. yes, the Star Destroyer. That is something There's this that... sense of scale yep. that's we... really mm -hmm. communicated well in Star Wars right. with we, yeah. space battles. Yes, absolutely. We can we can sort of gloss over the idea of how insanely massive these ships are in Star Wars right. because we're used to it. Yeah. But like that is actually really unique. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of stories will have their their spaceships or whatever be that insanely huge. Like it's almost like it was a contest or something because they start out a new hope and it's like there's this ship and you know and it's it's flying away and it's shooting lasers and you're like, "Oh, cool." Mm -hmm. And then this bigger ship comes, comes up over behind the it. screen like, like and this thing is like you can you can feel the <laughs> of the engines even though it's in space and you just see it keep going and going and going and then it swallows up the other ship inside it yeah and then they go to this other ship that is so big these other things are like not even a blip next to it right it's pretty you, incredible. you can forget about those things you know easily but they really need to be given their their credit where credit's due they do uh final thing has to be of course the final space battle over the second death star yeah in combination with the star destroyer blockade oh yeah the massive rebel cruisers that are yep. involved so we because see massive ship on mm -hmm. massive ship battle for the first time exactly because we Wars. hadn't really seen that before yep. we saw the, the, the transports trying to get away from the star destroyers mm -hmm. and yep. that was it like other than that it was all star fighters yeah but then it's like no big ship versus other big ships. Other big ships. Yeah. And then, oh, that big ship just got taken out in a single blip. By the Death Star. By the Death Star. Because yep. in case you haven't forgotten how crazy it is to be able to destroy a planet, well, these massive ships, there are no problem. Yeah. Also, these space battles are made personal by the characters involved in the space battles. Yes. Even, even when they're just kind of showing a montage of mm -hmm. all the pilots in their cockpits and stuff, you're getting an idea that Oh, these are human beings. Mm -hmm. They're not. We're not just showing yep. a big pan out shot of just nope. a bunch of them moving around. We see a couple blow up and, on each side, and we are also not seeing a static shot of the bridge of the main ship as people describe oh, what is happening in the oh, space shoot. battle. But you don't actually see it. You don't have to specifically call it Star Trek. Jeez, man! I didn't say Star Trek. You said Star Trek. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, but 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 anyways, yeah. uh, that's that's like the the main things we wanted to point out of the original trilogy doing well. Just with those with, few things. With so. regards to story, we could talk all day long about the sound design, the effects, mm -hmm. and yep. the music. But uh, because you know those are just always going to be good in Star Wars, exactly. we're not going to pay attention to here. If we have to rely on those being some of the good things that they do well in Star Wars, that means that this is probably a weaker part in Star Wars yep. in general. <laughs> now, one thing to bring up is that even these movies, because of the new Star mm -hmm. Wars movies that have been coming out, right? Yep. There are a lot of problems that people, you know, rightly have with with the movies as they're as they're being right. made right but nothing is perfect nothing is perfect but a lot of the times things will be blown out of proportion and things right. that actually shouldn't really be that big of a deal are like this completely ruined the movie yep so we compiled a list of nitpicky things that the original trilogy had that, that we sometimes nitpick a little bit oh, on yeah. because oh, we oh, love yeah. star wars but we, yeah but we're going to talk about them a little bit first off we have to talk about the ewoks yeah, guys. like so the ewoks 
are in Return of the Jedi only. It's a good thing to bring up because a lot of people are like, uh, Ewoks ruined Star Wars. It's like, well, no. if you're going that route, then they're... it could only actually ruin Return of the Jedi. Right, and but, they're just you know. in the one movie, and they're actually in a very small portion of the movie because they start out with the whole deal with Jabba the Hutt, which probably took up more time than the actual Ewoks. And there's also the idea that they are still introducing this new quirky different alien species and actually yep. going into the the culture of them and how it works right which even is, if which they is actually kind of thing. rare for the original trilogy to go yep. that in depth into a species which is i think actually the reason why they had a problem with them it was not that oh these little fluffy teddy bears shouldn't have been able to you know defeat the stormtroopers well, or I something mean, like that. That, that i actually think that might have been one of the big the big issues i mean they haven't been able to hit anything up until That's this point true, anyway. so why not so you know so if we're gonna nitpick you know there we might as well nitpick the whole empire i would say that this is probably one of the most worthy nitpicks on this yes. list and even and, i think that the reason why return of the jedi is not uh first or second on my list of the original trilogy is largely in part to right. the Ewoks. So, but this is when analogy. it comes down to it, it is a nitpick. It is. A it nitpick. is not a fundamental story flaw. Right. You know. Yeah. It's just something that it would have been nice if they did it a bit differently. Right. And that falls perfectly in the next one, which is the stormtroopers always, always missing. Missed. And and in fact, I think this one is offset by a different thing that Star Wars does really well. A lot of people are like, well, the stormtroopers never hit, so the heroes never feel in danger. But actually, if you think about the heroes. We've had Han frozen in carbonite, mm -hmm. had Luke's hand get chopped off, yep. Obi-Wan Kenobi dies. Leia was captured and tortured. Yep, Leia was captured and like, tortured. Almost all the heroes even suffer. Even C-3PO got blown to bits. Yep, almost all the heroes suffer at the hands of the villains. It's just not through the stormtroopers. Right. Which not makes it a worthy nitpick, but right. it still doesn't take away from the sense of tension yeah put on the right. primary and And uh, things, like, things like this are, are and we... It, it is easier to think of this as just like a, oh, ha, ha, yeah, stormtroopers always miss and red shirts always die. You know, the stormtrooper mm -hmm. shoots at the red shirt and he misses, but the red shirt still dies. You know, <laughs> ha, ha, so funny. Yeah. But when you think about it, a lot of the things that are, that are like nitpicks in the Star Wars movies that are coming out nowadays are really about as big of a deal as the stormtroopers always miss. It's true. All right. So. Next one. A lack of female characters other than Leia. Leia was great, but she is, like, until Mon Mothma comes up for her, like, one line... Leia is the only female in the entire Star Wars universe. And not only that, like, the other female characters besides, say, Mon Mothma, well, besides Leia, either have one line as Mon Mothma, or oh, they yeah. are Jabba's but... pole strippers. Exactly. Dancers. Right. Okay. So sexualization of female yep. characters, mm -hmm. or there's only one of them. Right. Bechdel test. Exactly. Failed. Star Wars is pretty bad at that, but... Yep. You know what? I'd say this is a legitimate nitpick, but it's offset completely by the power that Leia as the singular female character right. brings to the yes. Star Wars universe. So there we go. This nitpick. is this is another one. So in, in Star Wars, they have one person that betrays them and one uh, person of color in their cast. And they're the same person. Yeah. And it's like, it's one of those things that's like, okay, it's not a fundamental problem, but it's like... Really? Really? You know. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, Lando Calrissian still extremely good character. Yes, yes. very, very good kind of mm -hmm. arc that he goes yep, on over the story. They did a great job of showing his like conflict and the whole thing that he's not wanting to betray them, but like he is being coerced to do this and coerced all that. Coerced into, yeah, yep. It also builds up Darth Vader in a really clever way. Where yes, he's like, yes, you said they would be left under uh -huh. my supervision. And, he's like, and Darth I'm Vader altering the deal. And Darth Vader, Vader not is not missing further. a beat. And when he says that the deal's changed, it doesn't matter how much you hate it. There is nothing you can do about it. Right. Uh, next thing is just kind of a little nitpick. This is kind of the AT-ATs and how they're built up to be these unstoppable things. And they looked awesome. Oh, they looked so good. And, and everyone, terrifying. Has, everyone has that original feeling of when they finally see them through the macro and binoculars. Just, they just go up and up and up and up. Yep. But, oh, man. But then they get, like, tipped over by tripwire and it's like okay that's not necessarily a bad thing but then it's like oh that armor's too strong for blasters but now that it's knocked over we shoot it twice and it blows up yeah little little plot hole yeah. inconsistencies like that yeah um, um this this so, is one that i think is more of a thing nowadays than it was when people originally watched right. the movies, but it was uh obi-wan and vader's lightsaber, lightsaber duel, duel in because that it feels kind of 
slow and choppy right. and like a yeah. bunch of old guys in just sort of waving sticks around. Waving like, sticks around and as yeah. far as how they set up the fight, it was great. And oh, what yeah. the fight represented, it was mm-hmm. great. But it's still one of those things where when you go back and watch the original trilogy, you just sort of laugh and you're like, eh, yeah, that's right. That was that was before. That was they, all they could do. That was all they could do. Yeah. You know. So again, it's one of those things where the power that the characters bring into it overshadows the actual technical yep. aspect of the fight itself. Oh yeah. And then um so Leia the one female character, like real, actual female character yep. in the story, um, gets captured and put into Throw a bikini. Into a bikini for what? For what? Eye candy. Eye candy. In in and it's not even like on the uh, overall like storyline, like main storyline. It's just in the Jabba part. And Jabba's palace was great, but it's like, come on. Like there's yeah. there's so much more to Leia's character than that, and and the other and, and yet the, I would say with the nitpick with this mm-hmm. is that she completely overturns the whole thing and ends yep. up being the one that actually kills Jabba. Yeah, she ends up being the one that kills Jabba. But this is the other issue that I that I have with this is it's not just that Leia got sexualized, right? Yeah, it's not just that she got put into a bikini because okay, yeah, if that happens, fine. Yeah. But why is it that the entire time that she is in said bikini and chained to Jabba, her in her personality changes like completely like she at that point she doesn't say really anything yeah she just sort of being instead of being spunky like she was to vader when she was mm -hmm. captured she becomes way more docile right and kind of submissive and i think that was more of the more of the direction that they had for the film and i think that's a that's a legitimate i think that's a legitimate nitpick in some ways as well but they overturn that as well by having her be the one that actually yes. kills Jabba in a very grotesque, very... Uh, in a very almost very... physics-breaking way, the fact that she could have a chain strangle a neck that big, like... But still, She didn't it's get awesome. arm day. Yeah. yeah. And in this one, I would say, this one's kind of kind of a silly nitpick because it's also... But, they all, Star Wars has some awesome dialogue, but it also has some, some really bad really dialogue. Bad dialogue. <laughs> like, yeah. I but, mean... We could we could get into the we could get into the details, but all you have to do is really just watch a New Hope, all the way through, and just listen to the dialogue. Just don't right. don't look at anything. Just shut your mm-hmm. eyes and listen to specific parts yep. between like Owen, Baru, and Luke. You know, right? In and the and, farm. and or, a lot of the time, it's not it's not necessarily bad listening to it because you get kind of used to it, right? Because right. it's the it's the sort of the style that Star Wars goes with, but. If you were to be reading that and you had to read that out loud, yep. like this is one of the things that um, I think Harrison Ford Harrison made a point of, it, yep. is he's like, you can write this, but you can't really say it. Yeah. <laughs> he's talking to George Lucas. Like, yeah. dude, you can write this stuff, but you cannot say it. Like, because, you know, and, and it's one of those things where, you know, for any writers out there, if you want to basically put your dialogue to the test, read it out loud. Yep. And this is one of the things where I would say Star Wars has never fully gotten over that, but there's a charm there's a charm to the dialogue having yes. these quirky elements to it. Yeah, because because it's not that the dialogue, again, is bad overall. but no. there, Because there are a lot of parts of the dialogue where it is really good. Yes. But then there's a lot of points where it's like, okay, that that doesn't quite feel natural. Right. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then this is the other one that yep. I would say more relevant mm-hmm. nowadays than it is back then. Yes. Is that the films have been changed over time. Multiple times. Multiple times. And like, I... I want to go back and watch the movies as they were when they first came out, but like, how do you even do that? Well, also, it's not that you necessarily want to watch the exact originals. You want to watch specific parts of the original that were changed yeah. and not all of it that was changed. So, it, like, there's there's things in there that are a little bit jarring, like Jabba the Hutt being in the New Hope remastered right. edition or yeah. whatever. But or Hayden like, Christensen being in Return of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. Yep. There's 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 little things like that where yes, it's a nitpick, and yes, I am one of the people that probably nitpicks a, at least a couple of those. But again, the original spirit of the movie is not completely exactly. wrestled away nope. at all. It's, at all, not at in all. In some ways, it actually improves the film in some parts. Yeah. It's more of like okay, these changes, yeah, I'm okay with. These changes get it out right. burn it whatever and a, and a lot of times it's a personal preference thing like like it totally the, like is, the fact yeah. that people make it so that like it was made so that greedo actually shoots and han like dodges it and then shoots greedo right you know, things like that um but again all of these things are nitpicks that doesn't make star wars any less awesome and nitpicks in the 
recent Star Wars movies do not make them any less awesome. We will get to that next week, we Jacob. Will. We will. I think the one one that's completely unforgivable, other than the Greedo Han thing, because I think that's way more blown out of proportion than this mm-hmm. one, is removing Yubnub from the end of Return of the Jedi and replacing it with the galaxy celebration song, whatever. Well... Yeah, yub nub, guys. I don't. I don't have a problem with yub showing nub. the 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 galaxy and the different planets and stuff. But yub nub like that. That, that had heart. Oh, that had heart. That like, had soul. Like like people that have problems with the Ewoks, I think it's mostly because yub nub was taken out. <laughs> and then they have to. And then they have to see the Ewoks without yes. yub nub. Like oh banging gosh. banging on the on the stormtrooper helmets and singing and stuff. <laughs> oh yeah. That, After they like did what them like well, who, who knows, knows? <laughs> who knows but, all right guys well that that was a lot of fun if you guys was. have questions that you want us to answer in the next video leave uh, them in this one in the comment section mm-hmm. yeah we have a couple questions that have been added to videos and stuff but there's like one or two so we're going to try yeah. and pull them into the exactly. next one so leave questions at the uh, in exactly. the comments in this video if you want us to answer yep. them with regards to specifically around the star wars uh, uh mm-hmm trilogies but they can really be about whatever you. but they can be about anything we tend to avoid any like uh have you seen this though because you know right right if you want to ask us questions about that be sure to check out our patreon because any Mm -hmm. patreon support gets you on our discord where you can chat with us about storytelling or what have you and yeah yeah, if you want to check that out we'll see you there but if not we'll see you next week until then we're semblance of sanity i'm caleb i'm jacob and we'll see you all next time. time